Lord, when he lets you know when to preach something. And uh, his spirit's very real and he's very much alive. And I sure am glad to know that I know him and he knows me. But if you have your Bibles, we'll start over in Deuteronomy 29 and verse number 29. If you like to stand whenever you get there. Deuteronomy chapter 29 and verse 29. And now the Bible reads, The secret things belong unto the Lord our God, but those things which are revealed belong unto us and our children forever, that we may do all the words of this law. Almighty God in heaven, we come to you once again in the sweet and lovely mighty name of Jesus. Lord, I ask you to meet with us tonight and to help us. Thank you, Lord, for allowing me to already feel your presence. You said where the Spirit of the Lord is, there is liberty. And Father, we need liberty tonight. We don't need tension. We don't need strife. We don't need bitterness. We don't need anger and all these other things and malice and uh, being double-minded and stuff. Father, I ask you, Lord, to help us to set our affections on things above. And allow us to leave a little bit differently than the way that we came. We'd be so thankful for it, Lord. And I ask you, Father, to bind back the devil, bind back anything that may hinder this service tonight, and allow your word to go out and accomplish what it will. Help me, Father. I can't do this without you. And I'm leaning upon you. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. You may be seated. <clears throat> but I'd like to preach a message tonight that the Lord's laid upon my heart. But I'd like to preach on the revealing God. The revealing God. Amen. So I'm glad tonight to know that me and you serve a God that reveals some things. Now, there's obviously some things that the Bible says in Deuteronomy 29, 29, the secret things belong to the Lord our God. Now, upon this side of heaven, we don't know everything. Amen? We Scientists think that they've got it all figured out, and I heard a scientist say one day, because they don't believe in evil, they don't believe in good and stuff like that, because they don't believe in God, they said that we have found out that we can make an atomic bomb. But we cannot figure out if we should use it or not because they don't have no morals, amen? They don't know what to base goodness upon. They don't know what to base evil upon. And they're walking out upon the face of the earth with no hope, uh, no, uh, no purpose they feel like. But I like to say tonight we do have a purpose. And me and you are not serving some big brother in the sky that looks down upon us and just tells us what not to do and makes us feel good. And this ain't just a book, amen, this King James Bible that me and you hold. It's not just some good book to get us through life, amen. It's more than a good book. It's more than just a book to help us to get along life's journey. It's a book of salvation. It's a book of peace and comfort and hope in a lost and dying world. And it tells us about a place called hell, but it also tells us about a place called heaven. It tells us about evil, but it also tells us about good. Amen. It's not just the bad things in life. It also tells us about the good things. Now, I want to talk about tonight the revealing God. I like to say this evening, I found out that Christianity is the only faith. Now, listen to this real good. Christianity is the only religion that you receive hope at the beginning of the journey and not the end. <laughs> Christianity is the only religion that you receive the hope at the beginning of the journey and you can know it beyond a shadow of a doubt that you're going to heaven. All these other religions, they're hoping that they're going to make it into heaven. Hey, I found out that in Islam, in the Quran, that it says that uh, people must uh, uh, not have these three things. They must be free from three things to get into heaven, and it's a hope. Now, you ready for this? From the first one, everybody failed. Arrogance. Everybody has arrogance. Everybody has faults in some way, some sort, some fashion. You say, preacher, I'm not arrogant. Hey, there's been times in your life that you've been arrogant, amen. We all have faults. We all have failures. We all make mistakes. But according to the religion of Islam, in order to get into heaven, you must be free from arrogance. So what do you mean by that? They have to be free from that stuff is what they believe in the getting into heaven. 
Could you imagine dying and hoping that you just made it in? Going through this whole life without hope. Going through this whole life without peace. And trying to work away and just works, works, works. Amen. And fasting in the uh, month of Ramadan and stuff. And, and, and it also says stealing from the spoils of war and debt. In Islam, debt is a very important thing. I've heard of people that uh, they say in Islam that when somebody dies, if they're in debt to somebody, they won't even pray for them at their funeral. Amen. Debt is taken very serious. There's some things that they take very serious in the Islam religion, and they're hoping that they get into heaven when it's all said and done. They got to go this whole life with no peace, no comfort, just working away, working away, and hoping that they'll make it into heaven. But Christianity is the only religion that you receive hope at the beginning of the journey. Thank God when we got saved and born again that me and you serve a God that revealed himself to us. These atheists today, they say, we want some evidence. We want facts. We want science, science, amen. But I found out that in Daniel chapter 12 and verse number 4 that the Bible says many shall run to and fro and knowledge shall be increased. This world is getting smarter by the minute. We are making stuff that this world would have never thought that would be upon the face of the planet just a hundred years ago. You do not even know what's being conjured up in the labs and the stuff that's going on in China and this whole stuff we're putting chips in people's hands and chips in people's foreheads. It's already starting, Brother Charles. This world is just growing and growing and growing in knowledge. They're running to and fro. And they think that they've outsmarted God. Amen? But hey, the thing is, God knows who you are. You ain't revealing nothing to God. God's got to do the revealing to us. And I'm glad to know that me and you serve a God that reveals himself to us. We should be thankful today that we don't have to wait for God to reveal himself to us when we die, but he reveals himself to us in this life. When we get saved and born again, God has revealed himself in the person of Jesus Christ. God has revealed himself through his word. God has revealed himself through his creation. In Romans chapter 1 and verse number 20, the Bible says the creation of the world is clearly seen, being understood by the things that are made, even his eternal power and Godhead, so that they are without excuse. You can find God through his creation. You can find God through his word. Amen. And I'm glad to know that God wants to reveal himself to us. God don't sit up there and just say, I'm up here, you're down there. I found out in life that God walks with me and you. That God's right here with us. He ain't some big God up in heaven pointing down his finger upon the earth. No, God walked in the person of Jesus Christ in a body that felt pain and suffering and death and walked among people so he can walk with us today. Sure, I'm glad to know that God walks with me and you. He ain't a God that just looks down on me and you. For God so loved the world that he gave his only begotten son that whosoever believeth in him should not perish and have everlasting life. Do you know when everlasting life begins? It ain't when I die. It's whenever my journey began this evening. Whenever I got saved and born again, I received eternal life right then and there. Right then and there. Born again by the grace of God. To never be left nor forsaken. That's what my Bible teaches. He'll never leave us nor forsake us. He's the same yesterday, today, and forever. Amen. I'm not waiting to know if I'm saved. I'm not being saved. I'm already saved. Amen. And God has given me his spirit. And I have felt the change on the inside. And I have seen the evidence of what Jesus Christ can do this evening. You put Jesus Christ in somebody's life, he could take away the liquor bottle, he could take away the drugs, the perversion, the hormones, and make something different in somebody's life. I see evidence in Jesus Christ this evening. People want evidence. Amen, I'm going to tell you something. I got a quote by a famous atheist by the name of Peter Atkins, and I pray that you all would listen to this. This is what Peter Atkins said, a famous atheist. You can find him, find him all over the internet. He said to John Lennox, 
a Christian and professor at Oxford University. This is what he said. He said, stop deceiving people with false hope and leave helping people to psychologists. And he said, if he's seen the resurrection of Jesus Christ, this is what, this is what Peter Atkins said, if he's seen the resurrection of Jesus Christ, he'd mark it down as a hallucination. He said, if I seen it, he said, I would mark it down that I was hallucinating. And he said, for people to leave the comforting to psychologists. Because we're deluding people. Now, I'm going to tell you something. John Lennox is a very smart guy. This will bless your heart. You know what he said? My goodness, amen. This will make a Presbyterian shout. It said, but Peter Atkins missed the part that psychologists have already done a study on the resurrection. Psychologists have already studied the resurrection and hallucination. You do a study on that. So he said, I would mark it down as a hallucination. But psychologists have already studied the resurrection and hallucination. You don't want to know what they said? This is what they said. I'll read it to you. <laughs> they said, it's impossible that it was a hallucination. And one of the famous psychologists said this, hallucinations on individual event but from one person. If 500 people have the same hallucination, that's a bigger miracle than the resurrection. Ain't that good? Amen. Hey, Jesus Christ appeared to over 500 people in a, in a resurrected body this evening. Yeah, hey, he's alive and he's well and he's truth and God has revealed to people that he is God this evening. You know what it says in 1 Corinthians 15, 6? It says, after that he was seen of, of above 500 brethren at once, of whom the greater part remain unto this present, but some are falling asleep. What do you mean by that? Peter Atkins had, Peter Atkins, he had his stuff all twisted. He said, we're deluding people, leave it to the psychologists. But he didn't know the psychologists already studied the resurrection. He said, it's impossible, it's a hallucination. That's an individual event. How is 500 people hallucinating the same thing? Amen. God is perfect and he put everything inside of his book that science cannot disprove the Bible this evening. So many people think that science is contrary to the Bible. I don't believe so. I believe in the science falsely so called. But I believe that you can find science all through this book. Amen. I, I, I believe in science this evening, but I don't believe in putting science above the Scripture. Don't believe in putting science above the Word of God. There's a reason that God said in the beginning, uh, God created the heaven and the earth. Amen. He's put things upon this earth that me and you can see Him and find Him and study about the things that He has created. Me and you do not serve a God that is way, 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 way out in the distance. He's right here. Right now, among me and you, he's walked among people. He suffered death. He was tempted and hung upon a cross and took a crown of thorns upon his head. And I'm going to tell you something. This is what atheists want. They want God to reveal himself in the way that they want him to. I found out that they want God to reveal himself through the way that they want him to reveal himself. But Jesus said, I am the way, the truth, the life. No man cometh to the Father but by me. There's one way into heaven, and it's through the Son this evening. God said, God said this, except the Spirit of God draw a man, he cannot be saved. But I sure am glad that God does the drawing. The Word of God has drawing power, amen. And I believe in standing on the Word of God. It has stood the test of time. In Psalm 12, 6 through 7, it says the words of the Lord are pure words, as silver tried, and a furnace of earth purified seven times. Thou shalt keep them, O Lord, and thou shalt preserve them from this generation forever. The Word of God has stood the test of time and will continue standing the test of time. And when it's preached, it does something in the hearts and souls and minds of human beings this evening. It does something rehab can't do. It does something drugs can't do. It does something alcohol can't do. And God reveals himself through the preaching of the word of God this evening. Ain't you glad God reveals himself to us? 
Could you imagine walking through this life and saying, I hope that I make it? You know, I find out that Christianity is a religion full of knowing things. It's not only a religion, it's a personal relationship. But it's defined as religion. Religion ain't going to get me into heaven. Jesus Christ is. But that's what man labels it as religion. And Christianity is a religion full of knowing things. You can know that you are saved. You can know God. You can know that you're going to heaven. Amen. At the beginning of the journey, whenever I got saved and born again, I didn't know everything inside of that book, but I knew Jesus Christ, the author of the book. Amen. And I'm glad to know that whenever you get saved and born again, that now he knows you and you know him this evening. Something changes on the inside. It's undeniable, amen. Hey, we got testimonies all across this room where God has revealed himself time and time again. He don't fail, amen. He's not slack concerning his promises. Everything inside of this book, if you follow it this evening, comes to truth. I found out that whenever you follow, if you can follow everything inside of that book, I ain't never heard of one person follow anything inside of that book and fail. What do you mean by fail? What I'm saying is, is God's promises are sure. Amen. That book does not fail this evening. When you follow that book, you find out that God is real and that God had to have wrote that book and he reveals it, Brother Charles. You do this, this is what will happen. You pray, I hear, amen. When you talk to me and you worship and where two or three are gathered in my name, there I will be in the midst. I thank God for the church and Christ died for the church and he loves the church and we're one body, many members. And the Bible has told us time and time and time again that whenever we follow what's inside of this book, you can know me. What do you mean by that? We find it from Genesis to Revelation. I find in the book of Exodus, and you're talking about uh, in the book of Exodus with Moses, God showed his hinder parts to Moses. God covered the cleft of the rock and hit him back, and God's glory is so magnificent that Moses could not see God's face. He showed him the back half. Can I tell you something today? God don't even have to reveal himself and show himself to me. His power's good enough to know he's real without physically seeing him, amen. Hey, blessed are those who have seen, but also blessed are those who have not seen and whom have believed. The Spirit of God is so powerful without physically seeing him, without physically hearing him, without physically touching him, he's still saving souls. In 2024, that's the power of God this evening. God has revealed himself, amen. I am sure I am glad to know that me and you serve a God that reveals himself. I found in John chapter 1 and verse number 1, and the beginning was the Word, and the Word was with God, and the Word was God. And you go to John 1, 14, and the Word was made flesh and dwelt among us. He has revealed himself through his Son physically. Let me tell you, the last time, that atheists got what they want, Brother Charles, the last time that they got what they wanted and wanted to see God, they killed him. They wanted to kill him. They wanted to. But thank God the grave couldn't hold him. Amen. Hey, I'm glad to know that me and you serve a God that is eternal. I found out this, atheist arguments are so, so unbelievable. Amen. Hey, I like to study stuff. I study on different religions. I study what the atheists have to say. And I found out the more that I listen to what atheists have to say, the more stupid that it sounds. Amen. They don't even realize that the arguments don't make no sense. And it makes me want to get closer to God, not farther away from Him. You know, I'm going to tell you something very interesting. And hopefully this will be a blessing to you. <clears throat> Peter Atkins said this. He said that he believes that the universe is eternal. All right, so now watch how, watch how pathetic this argument is. He believes that we came from the universe. And he said the universe is eternal. Okay? No beginning, no end. He said it's eternal. But then he claims this. He got later on in the debate, and he told John Lennox, if everything has to have a creator, who created God? But, they, but he believed, he, hey, what I'm saying is, is he's saying God had to be created by his universe, his God, never had to have a creator. 
It don't make no sense this evening. We serve a God without beginning, without end. He's 10,000 years ago. He's here right now. He's in the future. He's omnipresent, omnipotent, and omniscient, all-powerful, all-knowing, and not changing this evening. Atheist arguments don't make no sense. They say your God has to have a creator, but your universe don't. We came from the universe that has no, no beginning, no end, but our God has to have a beginning and the end. I don't think so, Jack. Hey, some people say, oh, I don't believe in the Big Bang. I do believe in it. I believe that God said bang and everything came into existence. Glory to God. I'm thankful today God just spoke and everything came into existence. What a great God me and you serve. You say, preacher, I believe it. You believe that? Absolutely I believe it. The God that saved my soul through the preaching of the word of God is the God that wrote that book this evening. Hey, whenever I believed on the Lord Jesus Christ and the scripture that that preacher was preaching that day, and it became real to me, the whole rest of that book became real. From beginning to end, why would God put truth to one part of his book but not the rest of it? You believe in knowing the ark? Yes, I believe in knowing the ark. Because I believe in the God that made this book. Amen. And I believe that God is all over this book. From Genesis to Revelation. Amen. I believe that you can find the love of God. And there's power in the word of God. There's power in the preaching. There's power in prayer. Pre preacher, you say you really believe it? I Absolutely, I believe it. Believe it more than me standing here, Brother Charles, because I've had some things revealed to me. I found God through His creation. I found God through His Word. I could see God's handwriting all over everything. Amen. Hey, little bitty babies born in a womb from nothing, and God formed them in a, uh, in a mother's womb and gave them hands and feet and eyes and ears and all these different things. And people say, There ain't no God. We came from the universe. We was, we was tadpoles. And then we thought hard enough. And we said, I want to be a frog. I want to be a frog. Give me legs. We popped up and now we're a frog. I want, I want to be able to stand up straight. I want to be able to stand up straight. And then we became monkeys. But we was bent over. I want to be a human. I want to be a human. I want to stand up straight. And we became humans. That's what evolution is. That's the stupidest thing I've ever heard and I don't care the evidence you think that you found for it. Hey, I found out in my life that there's more evidence inside of the Word of God than any history book, than any science book, amen. It stood the test of time and it's still working in 2024. I ain't here because I'm trying to get a dollar. I'm not here just to preach. I'm here because God has revealed Himself to me. Ain't it amazing to know that God has revealed himself to you individually? He's a personal God. He's a personal Savior. He walks with me. He walks with you. He walks with you. He walks with you, brother. He's revealed himself to us individually. Christianity is still the biggest religion in America. 2024, even though the devil tries to attack it, it's still the biggest religion. Why are we still talking about a man named Jesus over 2,000 years later? To the world, we seem like idiots, amen? And once upon a time when I was lost, it didn't make no sense. But there was a day that the Word of God pricked my heart and God revealed to me that I was a sinner. God revealed to me that hell was real. And anybody else that's ever got saved or born again, God came by your house and revealed some things to you. God revealed that we were sinners. And God revealed that we was in need of a Savior. And God revealed to us if we've been saved and born again, that if you call upon the name of Jesus, that he'll save your soul this evening. Remember whenever you was under conviction, God was dealing with you before you got saved? You remember whenever you got saved, you felt that overwhelming peace, the passeth all understanding, I've never seen anybody ever get up from being saved or born again to say this. That's the worst decision I ever made. Your God ain't real. He didn't save my soul. No, I'm going to tell you something. When somebody comes down crying and looking for God, amen, and you can see it on their face, they're under conviction. Every time they go down, they come up a new creature if they've called upon the name of Jesus. I found out that it works for everybody. It's a gospel that works for everybody. And God will reveal himself through the preaching of the word of God. 
God has been so good to me and you, church. He's a friend that sticketh closer than a brother. Amen. You know, I like this scripture in 1 Corinthians chapter 2 and verse number 9. 1 Corinthians chapter 2 and verse number 9, it says, But as it is written, I have not seen. I ain't seen heaven. I haven't seen God. It says, Nor ear heard, neither have entered into the heart of man the things which God hath prepared for them that love him. But God hath, I love this word, revealed them unto us by his Spirit. For the Spirit searcheth all things, yea, the deep things of God. For what man knoweth the things of a man, save the spirit of man which is in him? Even so the things of God knoweth no man but the Spirit of God. Now we have received, look at that, revealed and received. You know what receive is? You receive it. You have it. It's in your possession. The Bible says this, Now we have received not the Spirit of the world, but the Spirit which is of God. That we might know, look at that, key word, know, receive, reveal, and know the things that are freely given to us of God. Whenever I got saved and born again and the same thing for you today, God put His Spirit, His Spirit, uh, my goodness, God put His Spirit inside of a little bit of bitty body like mine and yours. That's what the Scripture says. God, the Holy Spirit, the third person of the Trinity, God the Father, God the Son, God the Holy Spirit, the Holy Spirit dwells inside of Brother Nathan McCoy this evening. God gave Him to me. And all I did was receive Him. Now He possesses my temple. <laughs> Glory to God. Amen. Something happened whenever you got saved or born again and God revealed some things to you. You know, the Bible says that the Holy Spirit comforts us. The Holy Spirit testifies of Jesus Christ. The Holy Spirit seals us until the day of redemption. The Holy Spirit's the comfort. You want to know something today? I have been by myself and I have felt alone. I have felt guilty or felt ashamed or felt miserable just going through things in life. Nobody else around. And then a sweet peace overwhelmed me. Wasn't even asking for it. I was down in the dumps. But then God passed by and reveals, you're one of mine. You ain't going through this alone. I'm right here with you. Amen. And God comes by your house and reveals himself time and time again. Amen. God has been faithful, amen. And he has revealed himself to me and you time and time again. God ain't left me and you here purposeless. God has shown us he's here with us. He's going through it with us, amen. He's not a God that's, that, that just stands up there. And some people think of God to be some type of, uh, uh, some, some type of stinking uh, dictator or something. They think that he's a tyrant. That's the word for it. They think God sent up here like a tyrant and this, that, and the other. But lo and behold, God was so humble that he came down in a human body and was obedient even unto death this evening. Ain't that amazing to know that whenever you follow the Lord Jesus Christ, you know that he is on this journey with you. A lot of times when me and you get down and we get out and all shook up and stuff like that, it's because we're playing with this world. God wants to comfort us. God wants to reveal himself to us, Brother Charles. I found that. He says, here I am. You know, I find this so interesting today. Amen. Hey, God is not hiding. He ain't hiding. You know who's hiding from God? They are. God ain't hiding from them. They're hiding from God, from conviction. God came looking for you in your place, amen. None seeketh after all God. They're all gone away. God has came looking for them too. Even the atheists, even the Muslims, even the Buddhists, the black, the white, the perverse, the sorcerers, the homemakers. God has sought after them, but they have turned their back on God this evening. 
God ain't turning his back on me and you. He ain't over here like this, hiding. Try to find me. I found out God's right here, right up in your face. He says, here I am. Here I am. If you want me, you can have me. If you want to get to heaven, come on board. You don't want to go to hell, glory to God. I want you this evening. Amen. Hey, like the prodigal son. I sure do love that song, like the prodigal son. But I like to say this evening, hey, remember his father was standing there with wide open arms. He wasn't hiding to say, oh no, he's a bad guy. I don't want nothing to do with him. <clears throat> Get him away from me. He's done too much sin. Get him away from me. He's been playing with this world. I'm ashamed of him. I, I found out, Brother Charles, whenever I came got to get saved, all my sin, all my guilt, all my shame, the Father looked past it, wrapped me in his arms, and revealed, I love you. I want you. You haven't done too much. You have a purpose in this life. And I want you this evening. Found out that God wants to save sinners. He don't want to send them to hell. He's long suffering to us where they're not, not willing that any should perish. That word any means any, amen. You know what long suffering means? That he's been suffering for a long time for what we've been doing to him. But he's not willing that any should perish, but that all should come to know him. That's the God that me and you serve. He's a just God. He's a revealing God. He's a loving God. He's a merciful God. But if you die without Jesus, that God that has revealed himself is going to reveal to you that hell is a real place. Hell is a place where the worm dieth not and the fire is not quenched. Some people say, I believe it whenever I see it. Whenever you see it, it's too late. You ain't getting out of hell, amen. Hey, it's not only a separation from God, but it's an eternal place of judgment. You know, if there's an everlasting heaven, there has to be an everlasting hell. There's everla everlasting life, there's everlasting death. It's both sides of the spectrum. And people has made up this God in their head that's fake. He ain't no real God. The universe ain't no God. Apes and monkeys and just all this silly stuff, that's not no God. That's a God that people's made in their own brain and their own heart. You know, I find out in Romans chapter 1, and we're going to be finished up, is that men are inventors of evil things. I want to leave you with a little bit of hope tonight and to say this. God reveals himself to us, and he reveals his character to us. So many people want to blame God for evil. Why is there evil in this world? If there, Hey, watch this. This is pretty good. Some people say this. They say, if there's a loving God, why is there evil in the world and they want God to take it away to justify the goodness of God? Can I tell you something? If God took the evil away, we wouldn't be here. What do you mean by that? We're evil without God. Our flesh is wicked. And they say, hey, we ain't robots this evening, amen? What are you saying? That God allows suffering? Yes, he allows suffering in this life. But one day this corruptible bull is going to put on incorruption and death shall be swallowed up in victory. God has revealed to me that this life is temporary and a vapor that appeared for a little time, according to James 4.14, appeared for a little time and then vanished away. This life has suffering. This life has death. This life has worry and so on and so forth. But God has revealed that he's right there with us. If the same God in that book that has revealed to us that we can be saved and go to heaven, that's not it. Everything else in there is true. What do you mean by that? We're not just going to heaven. God's with us walking here with us right now. He ain't just saying, I'm only going to bring you to heaven. No, while we're in this life, we got hope in Jesus Christ. Whenever we pray that God's listening to me and you, 
Hebrews 4.16 says this, Let us therefore come boldly unto the throne of grace that we may obtain mercy and find grace to help in a time of need. Me and you could go boldly unto the throne of grace. Say, God, help me. Give me some comfort. I feel sorrowful. I'm going through it. And the same God that revealed himself today, that day that you got saved or born again is the same God that can reveal to himself to you whenever you got a going to a funeral. Whenever you're at work and everybody around you, all kinds of evilness and cussing and stuff. I found out in life a lot of people worry about their salvation and stuff. And they're worried about it. But I found out this, Brother Charles, and this is a very, very, very good portion of Scripture in 1 Corinthians. I'd have to find it. But it says that if you're without chastisement, you're a bastard. Whenever I got saved or born again, I started feeling something I did not once feel. And a good sign that somebody is saved is that they feel something compared to what they used to not feel. There's a lot of people that worry about it, and we know a specific brother in the church that stood up and testified about it, so it's not a secret, but he's worried about it. But he feels something. He feels he's messing up. He feels he's making a mistake. And once upon a time, he did not feel convicted for that stuff. God dealeth with us as sons, Brother Charles. He chastens those whom he loves. And if you're being dealt with, God is revealing himself to you that he loves you this evening. Let God deal with you, amen. God will take you to the woodshed. He'll let you know when you're doing wrong. And a good way to know that you're probably not saved is if you're doing that stuff and you don't feel nothing. That's Bible this evening. The Bible says if you're without chastisement, you're bastards. But I believe in the Word of God and that God's revealing Himself is letting you know, grabbing you up and saying, hey, hey, you ain't supposed to be here. You ain't supposed to be doing this. You shouldn't be listening to that, amen. Hey, that's the, the grace of God dealing with you. Whenever the word of God pricks your heart, amen, let it prick your heart. Let it step on your toes. Let it do something to you because that's God revealing to you that he loves you this evening. Thank God we ain't a reprobate, amen. Thank God we ain't a reprobate. A reprobate ain't no different than a dead man. Doctor dealing with the dead man, amen. Once somebody gets turned over to a reprobate mind, it's too late. God gives them up, God gives them up, God gives them over. God ain't no longer saying, here I am. Here I am. That scripture this evening, there's reprobates walking in this world that will never know God. But I believe, Brother Charles, I believe, I believe with all my heart, anybody that wants to be saved and born again, God will reveal himself to you. You say, why do you believe it? Because I've had an experience according to the Word of God. Scriptural. A lot of people have these experiences of falling out on the floor and being slain in the Spirit. I don't find that in the Word of God. But I found out everything in the Word of God that that book tells me to do. If I do it, amen, God reveals Himself, amen. You cannot outgive God. I found out when you start tithing and you start offering, amen. Hey, the Bible says in Malachi chapter 3, and people use this verse even out of context, that's Old Testament. And people use that to say, this is what the Bible says. But that's written to a different time period, Brother Charles. But long story short, I mean, I ain't going to use that to beat on nobody tonight. But I'm going to tell you, when you start giving yourself, start giving your time, start giving your money, you cannot outgive God this evening. He'll reveal to you that he will outdo you every single time. I can't outdo God. I could, I could give till I can't give no more. And if I'm giving to God, He's always going to supply. It's a bell that never runs dry. And you can never hit the bottom. Amen. And God pours out blessings upon those that give to Him this evening. I found time and time again that I have proved Him. I have tried Him. And He's always came through faithful. Amen. But we're going to be dismissed. And if you're here today and you're lost and you don't know the Lord Jesus Christ, you can know Him today. Today is the day of salvation. Romans 10, 13 says, For whosoever shall call upon the name of the Lord shall be saved. It's a whosoever salvation. 
And in Romans chapter 10 and verse number 9, this is how you do it. You want to know the one way into heaven. So simple. It's so simple. It works for me. It worked for you. It worked for you. It worked for you. Everybody that's ever got in and had a change. This is what they did. That if thou shalt confess with thy mouth the Lord Jesus and believe in thy heart that God hath raised him from the dead, thou shalt be saved. For with the heart man believeth unto the righteousness. With the mouth confession is made unto salvation. What are you confessing? You're confessing the Lord Jesus Christ. The Bible says if you're ashamed of him, he'll also be ashamed of you. I'm not ashamed of him this evening. For by grace are you saved through faith, not of works lest any man should boast. It's the Lord Jesus Christ. People have so much religion, and the devil's got a good way of doing it. Well, I do this, I do that, I do this. Hey, our works or our no, righteousness is nothing more than filthy rags, according to the book of Isaiah. The only way to get God to reveal himself, and you want to know God, it ain't God, I do this, God, I do that, and you're going to draw his approval by what you're doing. No, 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 no. You need to realize that you need a Savior this evening, that you're lost. And if you're lost tonight, the Lord Jesus Christ can save your soul. There ain't nothing you can throw up in the face of God and say, God, there you go, you should be satisfied. There's going to be a lot of people on the day of judgment. When it's all said and done and God's going to wipe them tears away from our eyes. Why is there going to be tears? Because I believe we're going to see people go to hell. The Bible says, God shall wipe away all tears from their eyes and there shall be no more death, no more sorrow, no more pain for the former things are passed away. Why is there going to be tears? Because I believe there's going to be a lot of crying. Who's he wiping the tears away from? The saved are born again. That's what it says, Brother Charles. So what are you saying with that? And one day whenever you see God and you think, you think that you're going to see God and everything and, and, and waiting for it for him to reveal himself physically, so on and so forth, you'll die and go straight to a place called hell. Right now, God can save your soul. We're going to finish up right there. God is a revealing God. <laughs> Thank God he's revealed himself to me and you. We've got hope in this life. Right now, I'm not waiting. Right now, I got hope. And you also have hope this evening. We're going to be finished up. Dear Lord and Heavenly Father, we come to you once again in Jesus' name. Pray, Lord, that your word has touched somebody's heart.